Have you ever wondered what would happen if you drilled a hole through the earth and jumped in? It's a question that tickles the imagination, isn't it? Let's unpack this hypothetical scenario a bit. First things first, the earth isn't a solid lump of rock. It's more like a jawbreaker candy with layers upon layers of different materials. From the crust, which is where we live, you'd first have to drill through about 25 miles of rock and soil. Then, you'd enter the mantle, a layer of superheated rock about 1800 miles thick. And we're not even halfway through yet. Beyond the mantle, you'd encounter the outer core, a sea of liquid metal roughly 1400 miles deep. Finally, you'd reach the inner core, a solid ball of iron and nickel, another 800 miles down. All in all, we're talking about a hole that's about 4000 miles deep. Now let's imagine you've managed to drill this hole. What happens next? So, you're standing at the edge of this impossibly deep hole, you take a deep breath, and you jump. The world as you know it starts to shrink away, and the sensation of gravity takes hold. This force, the same one that keeps your feet firmly planted on the ground now pulls you towards the center of the earth. You feel the force of gravity tugging at you pulling you deeper and deeper into the depths. As you fall gravity accelerates you towards the earth's core. It's like the most intense roller coaster ride you've ever been on. Only there's no track below you, just an endless void. You start to pick up speed, slowly at first, then faster and faster. You're accelerating, and that's thanks to gravity. It's constantly pulling you downward, and because there's nothing to slow you down, you just keep getting faster. Imagine the sensation of that acceleration. The wind whipping past you, the noise of the air rushing by your ears growing louder and louder. The adrenaline pumping through your veins as you fall faster and faster towards the center of the earth. As you continue your descent, you reach a speed of roughly 800 kilometers per hour. That's over twice the cruising speed of a commercial jet. You're falling so fast that you could travel from New York to London in less than three hours. While this speed might seem incredible, it's important to remember that you're not actually flying through the air. You're falling, pulled by the relentless force of gravity. And as you approach the Earth's core, that force only grows stronger. But here's the catch. As you fall deeper, the force of gravity starts to decrease. This is because the mass of the Earth above you starts to pull you upwards. And so, your acceleration slows down. You're still falling, but not as fast. But wait, you're not going to keep accelerating forever. As you approach the Earth's core, things start to change. You might remember from your high school physics class that the force of gravity depends on mass. As you get closer to the core, the mass of the Earth above you starts to outweigh the mass below you. This means that the force pulling you downward begins to decrease. It's a bit like the sensation you feel when an elevator slows as it reaches your floor, only far more intense. But let's take a moment to ponder on this. What happens when you reach the very center of the Earth? The gravitational pull from all the mass surrounding you balances out. In other words, you experience zero gravity. Picture this. You're floating in a sea of molten iron, suspended in the heart of our planet. It's an otherworldly image, isn't it? Now, let's take a step back and think about your speed. You've been accelerating towards the core but as you approach it you start to decelerate. Why? Because as the gravitational pull decreases, so does your speed. It's as if the Earth is gently applying the brakes. This deceleration continues until you reach the core where you'll be at a standstill. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? You start your journey with a leap, accelerate to incredible speeds then slow down and come to a stop at the core. But remember, this is a hypothetical scenario. In reality, the intense heat and pressure at the Earth's core would make this journey impossible. Not to mention you'd be floating in molten iron. But let's not get bogged down by the details. This is a thought experiment after all. It's about imagining the unimaginable, pushing the boundaries of what we know and asking, what if? Now you've reached the core but your journey is not over yet. What happens next? Well that's a story for another scene. Stay tuned as we continue this mind-bending journey to the other side of the Earth. Remember what goes down must come up. And in this case, that's quite literal. After your thrilling descent and the close encounter with Earth's core you're now on a journey upwards, on the other side of the hole. You might be thinking, great I'm free falling upwards now so I'll eventually reach the surface right? But here's the catch. As you ascend the gravitational pull that was propelling you upwards begins to weaken. The further you get from the core, the less gravitational force there is pulling you upwards. Consequently, your upward speed starts to decrease. You're slowing down, and eventually, you come to a complete stop. 
but don't get too comfortable with the zero gravity situation. The moment you stop, gravity pulls you back towards the core. That's right, you're on a free fall again, but this time, you're heading back from where you came. So if you're imagining that you'll pop out on the other side of the earth like a champagne cork, think again. Unfortunately, you'll never make it to the other side. Instead, you're stuck in what scientists call simple harmonic motion. Your journey becomes an endless cycle, oscillating back and forth between the two ends of the hole, each time losing a little bit of energy due to air resistance until you eventually come to a rest right at the center of the earth. In this scenario, gravity is both your rocket booster and your brake. It's the force that initially accelerates you on your downward journey, and it's also the force that slows you down, stops you, and pulls you back again when you're on your way up. So while the idea of drilling through the ground and jumping into the hole might seem like an exciting adventure, in reality, it's more of a never-ending seesaw, thanks to the peculiarities of gravity and the Earth's structure. And so you're stuck in a cycle bouncing back and forth. But let's step back and look at the reality of this scenario. As fascinating as it is to consider drilling through the earth and jumping into the hole, we must confront some real-world challenges and constraints. Firstly, we have to consider the heat and pressure that exists within the earth. As we move towards the core, temperatures rise dramatically, reaching up to 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. And let's not forget the immense pressure, which is about 3 million times greater than the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Our bodies, let alone any known material, wouldn't stand a chance against such extreme conditions. Then there's the issue of the Earth's rotation. Our planet spins on its axis, and while we don't feel this movement in our daily lives, it would significantly affect our hypothetical journey through the Earth. This is due to a phenomenon known as the Coriolis effect, which would cause us to veer off course as we fall, inevitably colliding with the side of our theoretical tunnel. And lastly, we must consider the practicalities of maintaining a vacuum in the hole. The idea of eliminating air resistance to facilitate a free fall through the earth is appealing in theory, but in reality, it would be nearly impossible to achieve. The earth's atmosphere is constantly in motion and any opening in the ground would naturally fill with air. Even if we could create such a vacuum, maintaining it would require constant, tremendous effort. In conclusion, the concept of drilling a hole through the earth and jumping in isn't just scientifically challenging, it's currently impossible with our understanding of physics and our technological capabilities. While it's fun to speculate and imagine these scenarios, we must always ground our curiosity in the realities of our world. So as thrilling as the idea might be it remains a thought experiment. In conclusion, if you drilled a hole through the earth and jumped in, you'd experience quite the roller coaster ride. Beginning with a free fall, you'd be pulled toward the center of the earth by gravity, reaching speeds up to 25,000 miles per hour. Upon hitting the core, you'd have to contend with extreme heat and pressure, conditions far beyond what any human or machine could withstand. Then, there's the ascent. You'd slow down, eventually coming to a complete stop, and then start falling back towards the center. This would continue in a perpetual motion, unless an external force was applied. Now, let's not forget about the real-world challenges. The heat and pressure, the lack of oxygen, and the molten core of our planet make this thought experiment a non-starter in reality. While it's a fun scenario to imagine, it's best left to science fiction. After all, we have enough adventures here on Earth's surface.